Hi, you nines. It is time for the next video for today, and that is looking at your body paragraphs for a text response essay. Um, again, we've done this in class. This is just intended to support that. So um, you can stop and slow it down and go over it if you need to. If you've got any questions, make sure you send them to me. You ask me. This is really important. Next Wednesday and Thursday is your actual in-class essay. Um, but remember um, what we talked about with making our body paragraphs is this beautiful acronym PEEL. And some of you have looked at PEEL before with humanities and with English in year eight and below. Um, but we've added something in year nine that is important and it's this A here. So remembering that the structure of your body paragraphs is your point explanation, evidence, analysis, and link. Um, so your point is your main idea. Ideally, this is the one main idea in your paragraph, but you should also have some sort of direct connection to the essay topic. And to make it really clear, if you're talking about essay topic one, which is power corrupts those who possess it, or Animal Farm reveals the idea that power corrupts those who possess it, um, then you should have that idea as well as um, your kind of focus for the paragraph. So you might say something like, um, Animal Farm reveals that power can cause people to be corrupted by becoming um, or sorry by using violence to control the population uh, so you're connecting the contention which is that power corrupts to this main idea so power corrupts and readers see this by the use of violence and fear um, so just making sure that we're putting both the main idea and your essay topic or the um, contention into that point sentence, okay? Um, and then what I might do is go through with you this paragraph and show and explain to you how this pattern is shown a couple of times throughout the paragraph. This is a sample paragraph. It is not perfect by any means. In fact, it is quite flawed um, because the there's some uh, repetition of words and um, you know I actually put this together myself uh, using a student as a model. Um, thank you for those who noticed this spelling mistakes. Um, I'm fixing them now. Anyway, so this is a paragraph and I actually think it was on the topic of, and not a topic that we have this year, but a topic on um, citizens being silenced or Animal Farm shows that cit how citizens can be controlled. Um, but it could be any, it's just about how we write about it. We could actually do it for any topic. Anyway, the point, okay. In Animal Farm, Orwell expresses his concern about how fear can be used to control citizens and silence their views. Now, if I was doing the topic of power, I might make this same idea by saying, in Animal Farm, Orwell expresses his concern about um, corruption of leaders and how fear can be used to show power over citizens or something now if i was doing animal this is not about um the third topic that animal farm is not about animals i might even say yeah, animal farm um the so this is this is a story not only about animals but also about how fear can be used to control citizens so it actually linked to the topic um and then we explain we have to explain now in our explanation, we kind of, if you can see what happens here, is we have some really general examples. So we say, for example, in the story, Napoleon is depicted as controlling and brutal. Depicted is great text response language. To depict means to kind of show. Um, so there's a general statement about Napoleon. He is shown to be controlling and brutal. Now, there is no event, there is no 
actual quote or specific textual evidence that's used here. Um, so this is really what I would call a general example. And that is an idea about the text, um, an example from the text, but it's not specific. Um, and many people just write things like this in their text response and they keep it very general. And it's very hard to score this highly in knowledge of text when you're using quite general terms. Um, even the next sentence, if we read it together, his harsh punishments are an example of how he uses fear to keep the other animals under control. So again, it is a very general statement. An example, yes, there's harsh punishments you, and he uses fear to keep other animals under control, but there's no specific moment in the text that's explored. And that's really important that we move on. So that's our explanation. We're kind of painting a general picture by using a general example. Then we move on to the second E, which is evidence, okay? And evidence should have a moment from the text explored. Now you can use a quote, or event or combination of both. Now this one I would probably say is a little too long. Um, <clears throat> I think it's three sentences. You probably only need one, but um, having said that, uh, there is a lot of specific text knowledge that's shown here. It says, for example, when the hens protest against their eggs being taken away, that's the event, okay? When the hens protest, Orwell describes that Napoleon acted swiftly and ruthlessly. So we've got a three word quote there. That's a quote. So that is showing using fear because he's being ruthless. Okay. That's my specific textual evidence of the idea that is hinted at in our general example. Okay. Notice that I've written Orwell describes that. So at every point, we're stepping above the text and we're talking about how does Orwell create the character of Napoleon? How does Orwell describe Napoleon? How does Orwell use this event to reveal an idea? So we're not writing about Napoleon like a real person who ordered the, or a real pig, who ordered the um, hens to be purged, punished, uh, executed. We're actually writing Orwell created the character of Napoleon and he created the storyline or the plot line and for what purpose he did that. So we're really stepping above the text when we analyze and we write a paragraph like this. <clears throat> so the next sentence has two quotes. He stopped the hen's rations and nine hens died. So we've got two more quotes, three, four words. So short, learnable quotes. I really want you to get into the habit of putting quotes that you could conceivably memorize. So you don't have to memorize it for this one. We're allowing you to bring a cheat sheet in, but just to get into the habit, because in year 11 and 12, you won't have cheat sheets. You will have to memorize these quotes. So you need to get into the habit of actually planning for short quotes. Um, and let's move on to the next sentence, which is here. Later, Napoleon orders the execution of three hens who are described as the ringleaders of the plot. So the, the event is the ordering of the execution. Uh, so again, it's three sentences, probably too long for the specific evidence. We might be better off um, taking out one of those pieces, but it's showing that specific textual knowledge and the quote. Now, after my second E, comes the A, analysis. So for analysis, there are a few things we can do. One, we can link to the author's views and values. Two, we can link to the reader impact. The effect on the reader. This is creating a sense of sympathy. This is creating an understanding of the situation. Three, we can connect to the, let's call it the world outside 
the text. We can connect to context, which is what's happening at the time that this was written. Okay, so let's just at the moment think about those three things when we analyze. Now we can do other things when we analyze, remembering we're inferring, we're filling in a gap, we're saying things that Orwell himself didn't say, we're interpreting. But focus on one of those three things for now. So this is the analysis sentence here. Orwell uses these examples to symbolize how in communist Russia, it was dangerous for people to oppose the government or to try and protest against their decisions. Okay, So this one, we're kind of connecting to the world outside the text and we might even be considering the author's views and values. Um, now, if we use, used a verb like he warns, cautions, condemns, criticizes, then that might actually be more um, strongly talking about views and values. But this, this is kind of doing this world outside the text business. Okay. Now, what happens? Let's have a look at the next sentence. It says, the dogs are another example of how fear and terror are used to control citizens. Okay. Notice we've got a linking word here, another example. This is telling us that we've moved on. We're linking to a new idea. And so what's happened here is we had this P-E-E-A -E -E and now we've got another general example. So this isn't an event from the text. It is, you know, it's a really general explanation of an idea. So I'm introducing, I'm now going to talk about the dogs and link back to this point of the paragraph. So we've started with the second E, which is explain. Okay. And we do that for a couple of sentences. So the dogs are another example of how fear and terror are used to control citizens. Napoleon takes the dogs as puppies and turns them into his personal attack dogs. Okay, this could be kind of a specific textual piece of evidence, um, but it doesn't have a quote. So I'll just call it a general example for the moment. And here we now come into our specific textual evidence in the next sentence. So that is explanation or general example. And then we move to textual evidence with a quote and an event. So they, the dogs, run snowball off the farm and growl threateningly. One word quote here, who does at any animal who does not accept Squealer's persuasiveness. During a meeting, they seize the dogs, they seize four pigs and drag them squealing with pain and terror to Napoleon's feet. Okay, so we've got two sentences here where we really are looking at textual evidence. We're looking at some significant words. We've got a one word quote and a four word quote, and we've got a specific moment or two moments. Okay, that's my textual evidence. Both of these and all of these pieces of evidence should link to this point at the front. So we're squealing with pain and terror, that clearly shows fear. Growling threateningly shows use of fear, okay? Swiftly and ruthlessly shows, shows fear. Stopping the hen rations shows fear to control people, okay? So after our evidence, we should be doing analysis. So let's have a look. So it should move on to analysis. So here, Orwell uses the vivid descriptions, notice the meta language, of the dog's menacing growls. Oh, guess what? We've still got a quote. Even though we've started analyzing, there's still a quote in there. It's awesome. To show how dangerous they are. The dogs represent the KGB or secret police during the Russian Revolution. Orwell uses them to help the audience realize the danger that people living in Russia this time would have encountered. So we've got this analysis coming to the world outside the text and the reader impact. Okay, Help the audience to realize the danger. Okay, so we actually have P-E-E-A, E-E-A, -E -E -A, and hopefully we finish it off with a nice link. Remembering that we link to the essay topic, we link, the second thing we can link to is we can link to the point of the paragraph, point of the paragraph. Now we can also connect to 
we can link to the views and values of the author, but only if it's connected to the point of the paragraph and the essay topic. So we have a link sentence. Ultimately, Orwell is showing that it can be hazardous for people to oppose totalitarian rulers, especially when fear and terror are used to keep control of the population. So there's a link back here. Okay. And it possibly also connects to the views and values. So that's what um, a body paragraph looks like. We have this structure in this one. You can just do one set of peel if you want, um, depending on how quickly you're writing, how much you've actually got in there. But having a couple of sets of examples can show greater knowledge of the text <clears throat> and that will allow you to get a better mark for that criteria. So I hope this is helpful. Please put any questions into uh, OneNote, into direct messages, and let me know how I can help you to get ready for your essay next week. Thank you guys and good night.